Hello, React Native developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. In this tutorial, we're going to build the Matrix Digital Rain effect using React Native Skia. And you're not going to believe how easily such an effect can be implemented. And as you might have guessed already, the intro sequence you've just seen was entirely built using Remotion and React Native Skia. Now, to build the effect, the first thing we're going to do is to place the symbols into a grid. We use a custom font to get all the symbols, and we change the symbols at random time intervals. Now, we need to generate the streams. For each column, we create an array, and in the array, we put a sequence of random length where the value goes from 0 to 1. This is the value we're going to use to interpolate the opacity of the stream. And we generate also a sequence of 0 to express a break between streams. On each frame, we shift the values of the array, where the last value becomes the first, and so on, to give an infinity effect to the animation. And then we can add some styling to the symbol. We can use the opacity also to interpolate the color of the symbol, add some blur, and so on. A fairly easy effect to implement. So let's jump into VS Code. I have some boilerplate project here where I load the matrix font to get the symbols. I generate rows and columns to have my grid of symbols, which you see on the phone here. I have a blur mask to, to have some, add some blur to the symbols. And so for each cell in the grid, I display a symbol. So I use a text component to display the symbol value. I give the custom font as parameter. And so we know that we have two steps to do first have the symbol change randomly when animating, and then generate the arrays that we're going to use to build the stream of uh, the digital rain. So if I go back here, I'm going to use the use timestamp method, which is going to give me a timestamp so I can build the animation as an animation value. So I have timestamp equals use timestamp. And here it's important, I would say, to use the timestamp because the animation is infinite. So we are always uh, looping over and over. So this is an animation value in Skia that gives us the timestamp since the animation started. And we can pass it as property to the symbol. So we have time stamp, which is an animation value. And so now we need to generate a random value that goes from, let's say, maybe 50 milliseconds to one second or 500 milliseconds. We're going to play with these values to see which uh, values give a nice effect. But we need to generate the interval of time where the symbol is going to change. So when the component mounts, so I'm going to use a ref. So I'm going to call it range. Uh, let's say maybe so 50 to 550, so math random. So 50 plus math random times, um, yeah, 500. And now we can generate the index of the value. So I can do a value here because we animate where instead of returning the value directly, we return a callback that will calculate the value on each frame. And um, so we are going to divide the timestamp by the range to get the number and shift the values in symbols based on that index. So let me get the timestamp here. So we divide, so we have the index, and we're going to do a rounding because it's an array index. So I'm going to do a, maybe even a floor of so timestamp and value divided by the range. Here's the the suggestion from Copilot seems correct, and then modulo of the length of the symbol. So we can use it as an index of the symbol of arrays. So we return the value here. Let's have a look. So that seems correct. The only thing we we need to do. And we will play with the parameters to see um, what feels good in terms of the animation. But they all start 
at zero and go up. So maybe also we can add a random offset. So which can be any value between zero and symbol length minus one. So here again, we use, use ref and we do a rounding of so math random times that would be range um, symbols dot length minus one, which we can add here. So they don't start all at zero. I appear, ah, so it would be offset dot current. Okay, so now we have like a, a bit better randomness. So that was step one. The second step is to generate the stream. <coughs> so we're gonna create a variable called streams. And so for each columns, yeah, here we can, again, I mean, Copilot is giving some good suggestions, not perfect, but, so for each column, we're going to generate a sequence of arrays with values which are zeros to express blanks in the streams and values and sequences that go from zero to one to express a stream. And so we're going to need a function to generate random arrays. <coughs> and so maybe here you see I could do, uh, so random array of, I don't know, eight to 16 maybe. So the size, random size between eight and 16, and then a random array for the blank, which is maybe smaller, like four to eight. And here I want the values to be zeros. So I'm gonna say blank equals true, and we are gonna flatten the array. Oh, no, I think I just, I don't need to flatten if I use the spread operator here. So let's create the random array function. <coughs> so we have from to and do we generate blanks. <coughs> so we need the size. The size is a random value that goes from from plus, um, <coughs> yeah, so here the suggestion is correct. We do a rounding of uh, math random times the two minus from. So that would be correct. So we return the array of size. And if we return blanks, we return zero. Now doing these tutorials with Copilot is quite a different feel because yeah, it, it gives like some really advanced suggestions somehow. And especially since I've done the code already, it knows, it kind of knows already what I'm, I'm doing. Um, it's interesting, it's completely different uh, feel and also like trying to explain the, the sequences. Um, but so we return zero or we return a value that goes from zero to one. So that would be I divided by size. And so we have our streams here and here, of course, we need the length of the array to be much bigger than the screen. Um, so I think we're gonna create three iterations like this maybe, um, or six or five, I don't know. So we fill it with zero and we do a map where we generate the arrays and we need to flatten it. So something like this. Let's see. And here we can pass stream is, yeah, streams at I. So for the column, we select the stream for the column. So let's have the stream here. So it's an array of numbers. And maybe one thing we can do, so we are gonna have so we're going to interpolate the opacity. So opacity is 
let's do uh, stream at the row, the row index, with, which is J. And so we can do opacity equals opacity. So that looks good. Now we need to animate. So we're simply going to, on each 100 milliseconds, like we can choose the speed, not on each frame. It's going to be too fast. Um, again, it's annoying. <laughs> it's giving me exactly the right suggestion, or at least it feels like. But so every here, 10 milliseconds, we, no, yeah, we increment by one the, the index, maybe 100 milliseconds. And this is, I'm not sure what this is, but we can return, uh, yeah, stream at index. No, the suggestions are actually not so precise, but I mean, it's getting the right IDs, so stream. No, no, this is not, sorry. So this is index. So we increase by, so it would be G maybe plus, we increase by one, yeah, perfect. So you see sometimes Copilot can be even actually more confusing than anything else. Um, that kind of looks good, but we need to, yeah, a couple of things. I mean, the direction is wrong. And I think also I should put this like this properly. Pro Probably, uh, tu, 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 tu. so this looks good. And one thing, so we are going to change the order, but also one thing I noticed is that here we need to create a small random blank or so, so they don't start all at the same position. So maybe from one to three, I don't know. And I guess it's a bit better and we can, um, so we need to reverse the order. So instead of doing G plus this value, we, um, we're going to do stream length minus one, the last index minus G or plus G. So stream length minus one plus G. No, minus G then. So maybe the minus one is not required. So something, something like this. So this looks good somehow. I see that, so I see some characters alone. So I think I forgot here to write, to generate blanks. And I guess maybe, oops. So for the opacity, should we do, um, so I want to do one minus the value, but then the blanks. Um, are going to be at zero. So they're going to be one. So maybe here can generate ones instead. So something, something like this. So that looks okay. Maybe um, I could make this one yeah, a bit longer, one second, and maybe 200 milliseconds. And I think we can also interpolate the color based on the opacity. So we can use interpolate colors <coughs> on opacity. So we go from zero to one. So from this color to, I think I have it here, this green. And actually maybe from um, zero, eight to one. Something, or maybe zero, nine. So yeah, that looks good. I think one thing I would like to do here is really to increase a bit the, so maybe we can do four, eight, 
and maybe make this one bigger. The start is a bit weird. Maybe I can make one page smaller. But we can play with the, the parameters as we wish. So that's it, guys. I hope that you found this effect simple enough. It's interesting because while uh, doing the tutorial, I mean, Copilot is extremely helpful, but here I got uh, more confused than, than anything else. But I hope that was uh, easy enough to follow. This was our first Skia tutorial since the announcement. Of course, we are planning to do uh, much more fun tutorials such as this one. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking. Shot!